tidal wave of pandemic-related unemployment will reverberate in many different ways throughout the country for months, quite possibly years to come. One way, as millions lose their jobs, they also lose their health care coverage. And for so many, there are no easy prospects of getting affordable insurance. The connection between employment and health insurance is the focus of Paul Salmon's report tonight. It's part of our regular series, Making Sense. Trust in Jehovah and do what is good. Connie if Boyd I is trying hard to keep the faith okay. since losing her job at an airport kiosk. If I no longer have a job, then that means no longer health insurance for me. And with my illness, I have to have, it's very important that I have health insurance because I have Crohn's disease. Millions of Americans no longer have a job or health insurance. Waitress Amanda Dawson lost both. When I contacted my health insurance provider to see if they could work something out on my premium, they said no. With health insurance from Oscar, you can talk to a doctor anywhere, anytime, for free. Dawson had her own policy you through the insurer Oscar. She had to let it lapse. But half of us have employer-provided coverage, like Cook Emma Rittner who lost her job in March. As of today, I don't have any insurance. And even though I'm on unemployment, the additional $600 a week puts everyone on unemployment over the cap for Medicaid. Uninsured, unable to afford treatment for a tooth infection that keeps flaring up. I did manage to get antibiotics from a friend whose mom regularly goes down to Mexico to get uh, medication for their parents. And I've been taking that um, self-medicating. Uh, based off of Dr. Google's advice of every eight hours, and I'll be continuing that for 10 to 14 days. But when you get laid off, don't you get COBRA, that is bridging insurance, for some period of time? For me, I can't afford $560 a month for coverage, continuing through COBRA. My biggest concern is my wife and my newborn baby. Tim Maddox lost his job as a United Airlines subcontractor last Thursday. The next day, his son was born via emergency C-section. He's fighting to keep insurance through the end of May. So this has caused a, a lot of stress and anxiety when you think about you have a newborn. Want some more milk? And now it's going to throw me into a turmoil as to how I'm going to provide medical services going forward. Then there's the Pletch family. Mom Sherry was abruptly laid off from her auto sales job in April. Her insurance? It was terminated the day I was terminated. And I was told I had until midnight that night to use any benefits. Not enough time to stock up on the family's meds, which cost $700 a month. Dad Keith gets no benefits, but he still works, meaning the family makes too much for Medicaid and can't afford COBRA. So he works for a local company that distributes um, janitorial products to local businesses. So they're selling hand sanitizer and toilet paper and disinfectant to the prisons and to nursing homes and retirement communities. He is out among people where there are known COVID cases. And so that concern for me is if he were to contract it or to bring it home to us, what we would do without health insurance. Now, the uninsured can get a free COVID test and their providers can be reimbursed for COVID care. But that still leaves plenty of worries for substitute teacher Frank Johnson. He tried to buy a plan on the Affordable Care Act marketplace. It was unaffordable. I think it was about 500 a month, and this was the lowest rate that they had to offer. And so here I am basically without insurance during pretty much a pandemic, because of course our health care is still in many ways tied to our jobs or it's tied to a marketplace. The pandemic is laying bare a lot of the problems with the system. Princeton economist Ann Case. Her Nobel Prize winning husband, Angus Deaton. We're really hurting ourselves by having a health care system that sucks up so much money and destroys people's lives. A few years ago, the couple coined the phrase deaths of despair. It's now the title of a book that blames much of the economic anguish and declining longevity of America's working class on the health care system. 18% of GDP is spent now on health care. It's taking money from regular people and it's sending it up the income distribution to hospitals, to big pharma, to device manufacturers, and to some subset of doctors. Some of the big hospitals in New York or in Philadelphia with chief executives who are doctors but are now paid five or $10 million a year. Pharma executives get paid huge sums of money. Humera patients, this one's for you. Pharma floods TV with ads. Lots of insurers means armies of billers and payment deniers. 
And since healthcare costs are so pricey, employers have a disincentive to provide it, especially to low-wage workers. So if that worker is worth $30,000 to the firm, and the firm has to pay $10,000 or $20,000 for a singular family policy, that becomes sort of unsustainable. And so either wages have to go down, which happens, or they shut the job altogether and decide they can do without. And maybe they can hire in workers from the Ram Jam cleaning company or something so that they don't have to hire their own janitors. All of those are outsourced and the people are left working for firms where there are no benefits, where they're dead end jobs, simply because of this enormous cost of healthcare. Case in point, asthmatic Robert Lawrence, whose low-paying gigs have never come with benefits. I was a trash collector. I was, they call them brand ambassadors. I worked at um, a call center. Health insurance is a luxury he simply can't afford. You know, you kind of have a choice. You know, do I pay my car payment or do I, you know, get my inhaler? But aren't you worried, even though you're obviously quite young, there's a pandemic out there. Something really bad could happen to you and you have no coverage. I'm very worried um, about it. It's just that I don't have the money to really buy into that system. And hopefully I can get a better position, but you know, the future is kind of looking bleak. And the economics of COVID-19 could make things bleak for years to come. It's possible that many, many, many people will get tens of thousands of dollars worth of medical bills that they cannot pay. Frank Johnson hopes he isn't one of them. So what happens if you get sick? Uh, I'm just praying that I don't get sick. And just hopefully, you know, nothing happens and nobody around me gets infected. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salman.